Okay, hello everybody, and welcome back to Pioneer. Today, we are at, what is it, Simmons, I think? Scott. Yeah, S is S. Uh, Scott Terminal, on the planet of New Nieto in the Uh I got here by doing what we usually do. I take a mission, uh, get paid, and then find a place to land. And uh, normally, you know, from here, uh, we go and take a mission. But rather than take a mission today, I kind of want to fly around. Because as you can kind of see here, uh, the environment here at Scott Terminal is a little interesting. Now we go all oh, full 360 here. All right, uh, Scott sits at the bottom of a ravine, the bottom of a canyon, I suppose. New Nieto, the planet itself, actually has a lot of interesting uh, geography. So today, I just kind of want to do something that's a little change of pace. We're just going to fly around uh, New Nieto today. And we're not entirely going to fly around New Nieto. Um, we're going to do some kind of gameplay stuff, but, you know, a little change of pace, a little change of pace. So. Here's New Nieto. New Nieto has three settlements on them. They're all fairly close. We've got Tongport, uh, Van Veen Oasis, and Scott Terminal. And Tong is the closest to us, I think, at the moment. Uh, yeah, it's only 181 kilometers away. So, let's see. Let's check out what they have for sale and what kind of trades we can do here. So here's what Tong's got for trade. We could buy some grain, medicines. Medicines are pretty profitable. Precious metals. That's not gonna do it. Yeah, so we'll grab some medicines and take the rest in grain. Let's see, medicines. And uh, this station has a hundred bits of medicine, a hundred bits, a <laughs> hundred tons of medicine for sale. But the problem with medicine is like most high profit commodities, uh, the import prices, or the import uh, demand is going to be pretty low. So I'm not entirely sure what demand is that like at uh, Tong so we'll uh, just grab 50 tons of medicines and fill up the rest with grain that should make us some money at least so we have our profit or at least a little bit of profit. Something that should make us some profit. And let's take a look at the environment here. Right, so here's Scott. And look at this. Look how neat this is. I really like the way this is situated. Switch to the other camera. Of course, it puts us inside the planet. No big deal, though. So you can see already, some kind of interesting uh, well, mountains and ridges we've got here. It feels like most uh, planets in Pioneer are kind of flat. I mean, there are some craters and stuff, and uh, mountains, and of course, atmosphere, but they don't really feel as striking as the ones here on uh, Nieto. So let's take off and take a look. So my big ship is probably not the uh, 
best ship to be flying around these canyons with. Go ahead and select Talon Port too. Because uh, it doesn't maneuver quite as quickly as a smaller ship would. Right, and you can see my uh, prograde marker moving slowly to the direction I'm pointing. A smaller ship, like the Wave, would probably be better for flying around here. But this is still pretty nice. It's definitely got that that procedurally generated touch to it. All these spiky mountains. Really, really something you expect to see in games where the environment is procedurally generated. But it still looks pretty nice, I think. Especially back at uh, Scott. Now, right down at the bottom of a canyon, on the floor of a canyon, overlooking some uh, nice walls, canyon walls, rock walls. It's great. Let's pop down into this canyon. I gotta admit, as I, I fly around here doing this, looking at this uh, environment, I am totally reminded of Elite Dangerous. Because you could, with the, what was it, the first or second expansion, I think, land on planets, and you know, some of the environments on the planets were, well, quite similar to this. Right? You had. <laughs> Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh! Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> well, that was that was a close call. But you had these procedurally generated planets with occasionally these massive canyons or these ridiculous features on them, because that's what happens when you have games that randomly generate environments start seeing some strange things every once in a while. But you could land and then you'd get out in your little buggy, your uh, SVU, oh, S, S something U. I know it's not an SUV. <laughs> but you could run around, uh, you could drive around, I, say, I suppose you should say, on the surface of these planets. And it just was really nice. Now here's the flat parts. I left uh, Scott space. And some people in Elite Dangerous would would look for these canyons, look for these places on uh, the surface of planets where you could get out and do races. I always thought that was really neat. That was a nice bit of gameplay the community came up with itself. Yeah, but this this kind of flying around planets, flying around and seeing the atmosphere, uh, seeing the geology, geography? The surface of the planets. This feels good. You know, I like this. Not everything has to be something impressive like this. Or I suppose this is impressive. I think it's fairly impressive. You know, I like to fly around this kind of planets. Not everything has to be like this, right? You can you can have variety. And variety is perfectly good. Right? Because that's what's going to happen in real life, isn't it? If we ever 
get to do, you know, space exploration as a species, we're probably going to find a lot of the same. And then occasionally something amazing. If. If we can as a species. Here's another big canyon. This is nice. You know, wow, looking at this stuff again reminds me of the exobiology from Elite Dangerous. And exobiology was an absolute pain in the butt because you had to take your ship and you have to put it down and because the the landscape is randomly generated sometimes you will find that it is impossible to put a ship down on something well an environment quite like this because there's just not enough flat space to land <laughs> and that was what I was doing uh, when I finished playing Elite Dangerous when I stopped playing Elite Dangerous you know exobiology and what did I fly for the most part uh, when I was doing exploration I used an asp most of the time and then when the crate came out I switched over to a crate because you could get a little more jump range with that but when exobiology was introduced with the uh, the elite feet update I ended up switching to a diamond back because the diamond back was a lot easier to land on some of these planets than than any of the medium-sized ships like the uh, Asp or the Crate. A whole lot easier to, easier to land than a large ship like an Exploraconda. And I do kind of miss doing that. You know, flying over this this landscape. I want to put my ship down, and I want to get out, and I want to jump around. But that's not something we can do in Pioneer. And that's okay. That's okay. Pioneer is Pioneer. It doesn't have to be Elite Dangerous. Elite Dangerous is Elite Dangerous. Still, this still feels really good. I gotta admit, this music, this is really putting me in the exploring mood. I think this music was added in the, the February update, I think. It's nice because it's original music, it's not, um, you know, some classical stuff, it's somebody made this music for the game and I think it's excellent it fits wonderfully so we're 45 kilometers from Tong all these little hills. I wish the rendering distance was a bit longer here. At the moment it's kind of... you can see them pop in as we fly by. But I should... it should let us render further out. coming up on the horizon just there. Looks like a pretty big city. Big and flat. Which is a little disappointing. Scott had a nice placement down at the bottom of that canyon. But Tong's just here. Q. 
Okay, we are just about there. So we're 10 kilometers. Let's get uh, docking permission. Docking bay number one. Because we are number one. I don't think we're number one. Just a little bit. Straighten up. And let's put down. goes right up to the edge of the, of the canyon, I suppose. There we are. Let's see. Grain? Okay. Oh, no, we don't want to buy grain. We want to sell grain. A little bit of profit. Yeah, only 82 in demand for uh, medicine, so it's a good thing we only, we didn't buy the entire stock of medicine there. Because we would have had more than, uh, than Tong would have bought. So, that's, that's some decent profit. Okay. Level 10 technology. Okay, so only a blue nose on the market. I'm actually pretty close to being able to afford one. Hmm. I don't think I want to give up the skipjack, though. It's an okay looking ship, though. Five tons of fuel. Wow, that's a lot of fuel. Check out the bulletin board real quick. Two combat flights. And that could be a nice one. Okay, too. But we'll save those for another day. For now, though, I think we will call it a day. It's a little shorter than usual, which is fine. Actually, this should be the normal way. <laughs> this is not long. This is perfect. This is good sized. Everything else is too, too long. <laughs> but, anyways, I think that'll be it for today. So, uh, thanks for watching. See you all later, and goodbye.